Now, earlier in the programme, I spoke with Brendan Ferris about the Threshing for Cancer event to be held in uh, Gortnescarry, Kilorglan, on Sunday 25th of September, which will be a, a tribute to Butty Sukru, a dynamic Irishman in the 1960s in London. Now, uh, Butty, a publican and showman, made headlines bringing the Puck Fair goat to London and uh, also uh, uh, burying Mick Meany alive to set a world record and uh, pulling uh, a red London bus across Westminster Bridge. Now, his shows of strength were televised by the children's programme Blue Peter at the time. Now, he was also known on the boxing scene. Now, to tell us more about Butty's uh, earlier life, I'm pleased to welcome Terence Houlihan, a trustee of the Kilorglan Archive. Terence, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Jerry, and to all your listeners there. And I respect them radio in London. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Terence, we, we heard from Red and uh, Ferris, the organiser of the Threshing for Cancer, that the event on the 25th of September is likely to attract uh, over 3,000 visitors. Now, this year you're offering something unique as part of the programme, as you'll be, you'll be celebrating the life of uh, the charismatic uh, Butty Sukru. Many of our listeners will have, uh, you've been in London, will uh, remember or at least have heard the story uh, of uh, uh, the Botty Sugar. Can you tell us uh, more about him as a young man? He was nicknamed Botty because of his uh, squat and powerful build, I believe. Absolutely. He, he's, his right name was Michael Sugar, uh, but he, he, because, uh, as you say, of his squat uh, stance, he was called Botty. Uh, he was born in the townland, Gottenskiri, you now where the threshing event is happening on Sunday the 25th. And he was one of a family of six jury. There were three boys there, and they were all very, very strong and three girls as well. And, of course, uh, Butty, in, in his time, he started out just as a farm labourer. There were tough times. He joined the Irish Army at 17 years of age, and, of course, he was uh, spent all his spare time there in the gymnasium training to become a professional weightlifter. And he was also, of course, a variety artist. He was a circus strongman, an amateur boxer, a wrestler, a fight promoter, a television personality, and, of course, a governor of very famous Irish bars in, in London. Right, I believe he was actually a strong man yeah, for, for Duffy Circus back in the day. Absolutely. He was with Duffy Circus for two years in the early 1950s. And, of course, that was in an era, Jerry, when there was very no television, very little radio, and the coming of a circus to Paris was a very big event. I'm sure all your listeners and yourself remember Duffy Circus coming in to towns and villages all over Ireland. Indeed, indeed and I do. Was, and, of course, it was there that he cut his teeth, really, in becoming a very good performer. And, of course, part of that would be inviting any strong men in the audience to come in and try and outlift them or outweigh, outlift the weights that he had. And, of course, they never achieved that, really. So that's really where he got his start. Right now, he said, uh, the, the best known fighters of the day, such as Henry Cooper, made appearances at his uh, bars for photo opportunities. However, his influence in the boxing world wasn't uh, merely uh, provincial. Tell us more about his involvement with uh, the champ uh, Muhammad Ali and how he brought him to Ireland. Yes, in 1972, but he was responsible for bringing Muhammad Ali, of course, who was the best known uh, athlete or, or sportsman in the world, to fight at Blue Luz in Croke Park in 1972. And, of course, this was a massive achievement, really, at the time, you know, to get him. But unfortunately, unfortunately uh, because of the controls at the gates and things, a lot of people got in free on the day, you know. So money was lost, really, on, on the fight. And I think that had he made money on that day, which really he should have, he would have gone on to be a massive promoter because of, of that. And mm. the, back in 2012... There was actually a documentary made by uh, True Films, uh, Ross Whitaker and A.D. North Sullivan uh, for RTE television, and it went on to win the Sports Documentary of the Year. And this was about uh, Bhatti bringing uh, Muhammad Ali to Dublin to fight. Right, now, right. now that, that's a, a truly incredible story. Now, Dublin journalists uh, doubted at the time that uh, Bhatti's promotion would uh, come to pass, but such was, uh, I think, his force of character. He actually proved them wrong and uh, Ali's trip uh, to Ireland was, well, apart from that problem with the, with the actual money, uh, it was a, a huge and resounding success. It was really. I mean, when you think back on it, it was actually one of the great events of its time. And back then, of course, during 1972, things were, were very bad in Northern Ireland. So it, it gave the country a great lift to have Muhammad Ali uh, in Dublin at that time. And he stayed there for a week, and everybody around at that time said he really enjoyed his, his time in Ireland because... Uh, you know, the country was so much into sports and knew so much about him. that. And, of course, he came back uh, afterwards because he was made a free man of Venice. 
His people actually came from Innocent County Clare, so uh, he had great affection for Ireland after that. Right. And uh, he uh, he actually had a major. Uh, the, 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 I think it was uh, with, with with Muhammad Ali and indeed with Butty. I think it was it was two showmen at in many ways together. Absolutely, they, they, they were both. But you, you said it there, Jory. They were both great showmen and well able to uh, sell what, what their product to, to the crowd. You know that that Muhammad Ali, of course, was interviewed by Kahlo Shannon on, on RT television, and it was a hilarious interview. Uh, you know, for the half hour, but. You know, no problem at all, Telly. He is words at will. And, of course, with, with Butty in the background, you know, it, it was a great week. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, it, it didn't make money at the time. But, you know, Butty went back to London. He, he got on with, with the business of the day, got back into his pub there, the, the Duke of Wellington, and got on with, with, with things. He was never a man to, to uh, just sit on things. He was always a man going forward. Yeah, indeed. Now, uh, Terence, uh, Butty... Uh but he, grew, he was he was born, as you said, in 1924, but he tragically died young in 1977 at the age of only 53. Absolutely. He, was, he, he died in his pub in the Duke of Wellington, and he was actually bringing a fridge upstairs in the pub. And, of course, what he'd been but he would do it on his own, you know. So he, he collapsed, and he was, he was brought off to Hammersmith Hospital, and he, he died some hours later. And uh, that, that happened in October 1977, Jerry, and... His remains, I, sometimes people think that, that Butty was buried over in England, you know. But he was actually, he, his remains were brought back here to, to Kilordan. And uh, he came in across the bridge into Kilordan on a very wet, a rainy night in late October. And I saw his hearse crossing the bridge, actually. And it was very poignant because uh, the, the hearse w- w- was lit up and the uh, tricolour was over his coffin. And, you know, I, I just thought it was... Uh, a very poignant finish to a great career. But he was brought up to his uh, native area there, uh, up around Manus. He was buried in Churchtown Cemetery, which is a very old cemetery between Kilordan and Beaufort. And uh, he was buried the following day there under two pine trees. And those that were there at the funeral said, well, how fitting that, that but he would be buried under two pine trees, symbols of great strength as he himself had in life. And strangely, Jory, you know, a man you would have known well to was Christy Kassan. Indeed. Uh, there from the Kingdom Pope. Christy was, of course, president of the Kerry London Association, and he passed away, sadly, last year. But he was also brought back, and he was buried in Churchstone. And himself and, and Butty, who were, of course, two of the best-known governors of pubs in London uh, from the 1960s up until last year, were buried almost side by side. Their family graves are almost adjoining. Right. Now, I understand that uh, people who knew Butty from his time in London will be at the threshing for cancer. There's uh, endless stories about uh, this fascinating man. Rather interesting to hear uh, eyewitnesses, uh, eyewitness accounts, no doubt, from uh, some of the people from London. Uh, Terence, listen, thanks for that fascinating insight into the life and the times of uh, Butty Sucre, one of Ireland's best-known showmen. And uh, for those wanting to know more, try and get along to the Threshing for Cancers fundraising taking place at 1 o'clock on Sunday, 25th of September on the farm of Brendan Ferris. And that's at uh, Gortness Kerry, Kilorglan, which is uh, in mid Kerry. Entrance is only €5 Euro for adults and admission is free for children. In addition to the Buddy Sucre exhibition, there'll be also a multitude of, uh, of other activities. By the way, details on the website, threshingcancer.com. All right, you can see the press release at irishradio.org. Uh, Terence, this is most fascinating speaking to you. Now, I'm sure you could uh, speak for hours on uh, the, uh, the legendary Buddy Sucre. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Jory. Can I just say that if any people would like to see any videos or anything of Butty, if they Google Killorden Archive, we have videos of Butty and, and his life up there. Anyone that would be interested in London would like to find out more. And, of course, uh, we, we, we'll have Han Griffin, who was a great friend of his, a strong man and world record holder, there on the day as well. And, uh, once again, thanks to yourself, Jory, and to your communications manager there, Catherine Murphy, who tells me her brother, Captain Foley came from Carle Killorden. So it's a small world. Thanks very much indeed. Is yes. it just terror? It's a real pleasure. Thank you indeed. God bless, Jerry. Thank you very much indeed.